hello 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 and welcome back to the channel you guys welcome back to the wrap and scraps channel today friends what are we talking about well as you can see in the title I was supposed to film this several days ago when I actually made the pillow, but I forgot to do the intro. So here we are today. Hope everyone's having a great day. I wanted to share with you guys really quick. I wanted you guys to see in the background the curtains. So these are the curtains that we're making the pillow out of, okay? Here is the pillow. I'm gonna show you two of them. They're both the same, but one has downing in it, all right? So you can do the chop, right? See all the nice piping around there? And then one, this is just like a standard pillow you can buy where it's just kind of firm. And it's good to have both on your um, on your sofa because some people like to sit back and have the downing and then some people like more of a firm fit. Like for me, I like more of a firm pillow. Okay, I like the one in the back to be downing and then the one in the front to be firm so I can kind of sit up like this. Especially if you have a deep sofa. My sofa is deep, my sectional is a deep sectional. And so these pillows are definitely needed. But as you can see from the curtains, behind me same pattern same fabric you can take a panel of curtains and make yourself at least three 24 by 24 pillows with piping and all and we all know how much they cost in the store okay but if you learn this skill i know some of you guys are saying i don't sew i don't even have a sewing machine i don't want to sew it's not my thing i'm not into crafting blah 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 sis this is a skill we don't like washing clothes and doing laundry. We don't really care to do the dishes. Sometimes we don't even want to cook and go grocery shopping, but we still do it. Why? Because it's beneficial to us. So learn this so that you can make pillows for any room in your home for any reason, okay? Christmas, holidays, guest rooms, kids' rooms, bedrooms, whatever, all right? So stay tuned. Let's get into it. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Wrapped and Scraps channel, family. Today, what are we working on? Well, we're working on a sofa pillow, a throw pillow, a bedding pillow, whatever, wherever you want to put this pillow, okay? Let's go over our materials. I've got some threading to go around the outside of the perimeter of the pillow because we're going to be doing some piping on this pillow. I've got my zipper. I've got my 2 inch by 24 inch long pieces of fabric to wrap the um, cording in. I also have two pieces of fabric that are 24 by 24 for the size of the pillow, okay? I wanted to share this with you guys because you guys know when we go into home goods, those pillows sometimes are extremely costly. You're paying $34 to $60 per pillow sometimes, and some people don't have that or don't want to spend that, okay? I don't want to spend that. Now, I will if I have to, but I really don't want to, all right? Now I am in my craft room, as you can see, so it is gonna be a little bit messy because craft rooms get messy, sis, okay? So as you can see here on my table, aside from my daughter's sight words that she needs to be going over, I have it on a big mat. Now I suggest you invest in one of these mats because it will give you a thorough um, guidance on measurements. Very, very important, okay? Measure several times and then cut once. Don't do like I used to do, sis, where I measure once and cut and then mess up fabric. Now, the fabric I got are from my panels in my living room, my curtain panels. I bought an extra pair and I decided to make some pillows out of it to match the curtains. Now I've got my 22 inch zipper here. As you can see on the table, I already have a little bit of cording that I did earlier. And um, that's from the previous pillows that I already made because I have two other ones that I made from the same fabric. So if you're going to buy an extra set of panels, like curtain panels, and you want to make pillows, you'll be able to make at least three 24 inch pillows. All right. And that's with the cording as well. All right, you guys. So here's what we're going to be doing. First thing first, I feel like my screen is so weird right now all right so here's what we're going to be doing i'm going to be sewing these together this is for the cording i'm going to be sewing these together i'm going to be laying these like so make sure they're um face to face but i'm going to be laying them almost in a square okay so i'm going to lay them this is the first thing you want to do cut your strips into two inch strips but don't worry about all that we'll get to that later um find your front that's my back, that's less colorful. Here's my front, here's my front. You're gonna do front to front, okay? But you're gonna take one like this and you're gonna put the other one that's the same size, you're gonna go the opposite way. So it makes like a little square right here. 
and from here you're going to sew diagonal across okay so that's what i'm getting ready to do right now okay so you just make the little square with the two and you sew it diagonally i'm sewing on a brunette in case you're wondering a brunette b79 the sewing machine is amazing so glad i purchased it all right so let's get going i like to put a knot in mine in the beginning that's something the brunette does for you you can program it so we're gonna just go across here like that Okay, and then you would get that so that it's all one piece. Okay, so you're gonna do that. You're gonna cut your threads or cut your excess off in the back so that it lays flat when you fold it. All right, there we go. See how I cut that? So here's the front. Okay, see how they're together? Don't worry about if it doesn't completely line up because we're gonna be folding this in half like this to wrap our threading, our, um, our string in anyway, our piping in anyway. So I'm gonna to continue to do that with the other pieces. Okay, so here we go again. There's our first piece. Make sure that when you're doing your lines, you do them in the same way. If you do diagonally from here to here on the next piece, do it the same way. Don't turn it the other way, otherwise your your um, your uh, fabric won't be straight when you are done. So let's do this one. And there's grids here I can line it up with. Okay. A couple back stitches. I should have pinned it, but I didn't. I'm guesstimating you guys. Don't do what I do. <laughs> just gonna press the seams open the seams right here that you just did just press them open with your finger you don't need to press them on a iron you can if that's what you want to do me personally I'm not doing that on this one I'm just gonna do it with my fingers like that okay with my nails now we're gonna get our core I'd say leave about an inch and a half out Center the cord, make sure you're using the right side. Okay. I like to use my zipper foot for this. So I'm gonna use my zipper foot. So as you can see right here, I have my zipper foot on now. So I'm gonna put this one to the side. So here's the cording for our pillow. Okay. Again. We're just gonna fold it in half like this. I'm gonna leave like an inch out, maybe two inches out. Maybe not that much, maybe an inch out. Okay, you're just gonna sandwich this. Now, you could use pins. I'm not using pins. I'm just gonna use my fingers to even it out there. Okay, I'm gonna even that out as much as I can. Just like that. And I'm gonna use my presser foot because that allows me to get really, really close to the edge of that. Okay, I put my foot down. You see how easily I got really close. And then I'm gonna even move my needle over so that I can really sandwich that in. So that's what I like to do. Again, this is just my way of doing it. No, I have never been to nobody's sewing school, but here we go. Okay. Now, as you do it, push your fingers forward to make sure the fabric is staying over here on this side as you do it to make sure it stays encased. You wanna make sure that you're grabbing this bottom fabric and the top fabric when you do this, okay? So that's what I'm doing right here. And if you push a little bit right here at the top with your finger, and just make sure you're holding that underneath so you have one thumb under, one finger on top. And make sure that thread is going through, that uh, cord is going through well. This is a pretty fast process. You see how I'm pushing it a little bit 
to my left as I go, okay? Every once in a while, stop and re, um, resituate. You don't wanna sew the cord itself. You just wanna sew right on the edge of it. Okay, so we're gonna do that all the way. We are coming up on a transition, as you can see right here. That's the seam from the next piece. When you get there, you really wanna make sure that you gather things. As you go also, your cord might wanna twist and turn. As you go, pull your cord like this to straighten it out. Otherwise your pillow will be, uh, it'll, it'll look twisted and coily. Also, your uh, seam right here is gonna wanna lay a certain way. Respect which way it wants to lay, okay? Go with it. If it wants to go to the right, let it. If it wants to go to the right, let it. Because that's gonna give you the best outcome, okay? So, anyhow, that's what I do. All right, coming up on that transition there. We're past that part. We're gonna continue on. All right, so now we did all our piping, as you can see here. Here it is all round up. It's enough to go all the way around the square. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take one of the 24 by 24 fabrics, face up, okay? Let me make sure I have my fabric on the right side. Yep, the darker side is the back, the more vibrant gold section is the front. So we're gonna take the front and we're gonna lay our tubing. We're gonna lay it right here, starting in the middle. So I have it on the cutting board, so I know I'm at 12 inches right here, okay? We're gonna leave about uh, two inches over, okay? And we're gonna lay that about an inch in or half an inch in, and we're going to sew all the way around here. When we get to the end, we're going to do two clips right here, a clip and a clip, so we can round it. Let me show you. What I'm going to do, let me push it forward on the mat, move the other one out the way. Lord knows we don't want to clip that one. So, as you can see, I'm about a half an inch in here. See my pins? Okay, the edge is right here. So about a half an inch, okay? Now, when I get to the edge here, I'm just gonna do, make sure you're only grabbing that fabric. I'm doing this with one hand, so. I'm gonna make sure I don't have my fabric underneath. I'm gonna do two clips close up to my stitch line, okay? Make sure you do not have that other fabric underneath, my friends. All right, so when you do that, that allows you to curve that corner, okay? And when you curve the corner, you still wanna be able to have enough for a half an inch right here. That way it'll be even all the way around, okay? Half an inch, half an inch. So don't curve the corner and then come way over here because now your pillow's gonna be off, it won't be square. So half an inch, half an inch, you wanna curve that corner at the half an inch mark, okay? from here to a half an inch. That's where you curve it at and then you start pinning. And this is what it will look like. Now, when you get ready to sew it, I'll show you how you do that corner. But it's gonna be like that all the way around. But I suggest that you only pin one side at a time. So we're starting here in the middle at the 12 inch mark. Okay, we're starting there. We're gonna sew down here a half an inch. When we come here, we're gonna leave the needle in, pivot the fabric lift this corner up and to that side and get as close as we can on that half inch line and continue to sew down. Okay, let's do that. All right, you guys, I got it lined up and we are just gonna sew. Doing this with one hand. I lined it up with the 5 8 inch again. All right, you guys, so I'm coming up on the end. I've sewn all the way around, all four sides, and I'm back at the bottom. 
So how we're going to do this is, as you can see, I kind of allow them to overlap a little bit. This one is more frilly than this one. So I left this one up just a tad bit longer than the first one. This one here, I'm going to cut off some of this rope right here. Just a little bit. We're doing this for a reason. I'll explain in a minute. So we cut that little bit off there because we're going to be tucking. I'm trying to do this with one hand, you guys. Okay, I should have left more room here, but I did. But we're going to be tucking one into the other. So let me cut this one down. And All right, so I've cut this one back a little bit. So as you can see here with this one, I'm just going to tuck that underneath there. Make sure the bottom layer is under that one. I'm sandwiching them together. And then this one on top. Now, normally I would fold this under, but I don't think, I think I cut it too short to do that right now. Let me see if I can do it. So I didn't have enough room because I cut it too short to literally just take this one and tuck it under so it has a cleaner line. I cut a little bit too much much off but you're not going to really be able to tell the whole point is you want them sandwiched together like that all right and then we'll go ahead and finish this one right here okay you when you get here you want to make sure it's snug so that it stays really well so right over that let's do a back stitch Right. and there we are see it's coming out a little bit but you won't be able to tell don't worry once the um, thing is fixed the way it should be all right you guys so this is what we are looking like we have all the piping all the way around here this is our bottom and what we're gonna do is start to put the zipper so here's our zipper we're gonna put it upside down on the right side of the fabric this is the side that will show Okay, we're gonna put it upside down. We're gonna put the zipper portion right against that bulk there, from one side to the other, okay? That is what we're gonna do. And we're gonna pin that down. All right, so we have it all pinned here. Now, as you can see, um, the way you want it to lay, you want this zipper to be snug against this piping. So you wanna sew that zip right in the crease like up against it not touching it but up against it in that because you want to be able to conceal it so you want it right up in that crease all the way down this is the bottom that we just finished with this part here that i should have tucked in and did better but anyhow you want to sew from here all the way down to here okay right, so here we are you see how I have my zipper right up against here, okay? So we're gonna start sewing right up against there. Make sure you don't get the zip. If you get the zip, it ain't gonna zip, right? Be careful. I like to leave it unzipped a little bit just until I get going so I can make sure that I'm right up against that. And you can pull this this way a little bit and just kind of nestle that in. And you'll see why I did that in a minute in case you don't understand why I'm doing it this way. Okay. So, got that zip right out of the way there. I know it's very close to it, but we don't want to mess with the actual zip. Now we're gonna zip it up. And just stay right along there. So you can see the zipper foot is kind of making the crease for me. Just take your time. Do not rush. Okay. Take your time. So I'm gonna get that zip right now. I'm gonna just go all the way down. I'm gonna take it down. Just keep going. Thank you. 
so far so good. Keep going. You're almost there. So I'm gonna stop right here. I'm gonna put the needle in with the push presser foot and move my zip. All right, so I moved the zipper out of the way so we can continue. I zipped it, okay? So let's finish up this last bit here, shall we? Still make sure you don't get that zipper, okay? When you come to the end, you wanna back stitch it several times. Because when this pillow is flipped this way, I have to cut those a little bit. You won't be able to see it. Let me see. Okay, so you guys, we have our zipper on there. Now we're going to, we were just sewing like this a minute ago. This is how we had it in our sewing machine. Upside down, like this. Sewing the whole bottom part, okay? So this is the right side, remember? So now what we're going to do so we're gonna keep that one that way. We're gonna take our next 24 by 24 piece. Make sure the pattern is going in the same direction. You see my pattern is going horizontal right here, okay? So I wouldn't wanna sew it like this because then I have two different, okay? So make sure your pattern is the right direction. Very important, that'd be very frustrating. You get this whole pillow sewn and it's the wrong way. All right, <laughs> trust me, trust me. So now we're gonna do it like this. We sandwich this one on top of this one. This one's facing up, right side up, right side down. And you're gonna sew, I like to flip mine over so I can see, okay? Just flip the whole thing over, like you're flipping over a burrito or a hamburger or something, hamburger patty, pancake, whatever. So now we have the one we just sewn on top and we have the bottom here. So again, we're gonna sew, line these two up, and you're lining up, you're lining up this fabric right here, okay? So that it matches up with the one underneath. And you're gonna start right there in the same spot, and you're going to again sew all the way down, make sure you don't get that zipper all the way down. All right, let's do that. All right, so you guys, let me show you what we've done. Here is our square, okay? Now, you see we've sewn the zipper on both sides. We did the first side, we flipped it over, we sewed them face down, zipper on this side and this side, okay? If I open it up this way, you will see here's the zip. You see that? So that is the zip, so when we finish sewing it this is the bottom parts already sewn you will see it naturally wants to cover itself naturally you can iron it which I probably will but now we're gonna do the rest so all we're gonna do now is open our zip because we don't want to sew it together with the zip not opened at least halfway because then we won't be able to turn our pillow inside out pillow covered inside out so we're gonna at least open it halfway okay Fold it back on itself face to face, All right? Now we're gonna line it up. You see it naturally wants to fold on there. We're gonna sew those two ends together, going straight down. So let's line it up. This is the tricky part, okay? Cause you wanna make sure you cover your, you wanna push it out like that. That part's under there. The what you call that. And you're gonna be sewing on top of the outside of that all the way around. And so that's the tricky part because you can't see it. So what I suggest you do is start to do some pinning. So that way 
you know where your fabric's supposed to be on all four spots. Otherwise, sometimes your fabric can shift and it will shift too much and you will miss grabbing it on the other side. All right? So we're just gonna go around like we are doing and line these two up. There's our roping. We're gonna pin right here on the outside because we're gonna be sewing along the outside, right on the outside of that, all the way around, okay? Aside from the bottom portion that we've already done. So I'm just gonna put a little stationary pin right there so that I can remember. You guys, I got a piece of glass in my foot earlier today from my one of my beautiful daughters breaking something. <laughs> And it is so freaking painful. I took it out. I'm wondering if I still have glass in it because that's how bad it hurts. And I'm hoping that's not the case. I'm hoping it's just swollen and upset at the moment. But I just don't know, sis. I don't know. It's so painful, Lord. Um, whatever's in there is gonna have to be in there for now. All right, so. Again, we're going to be sewing around the outside on that. Here's the roping. You can't see it. You're just going to have to envision envision it. You can feel it, though. You're going to put that foot right up against the edge, and I'm going to show you that on the sewing machine. We're going to start on this side. Okay, so this is what we're doing. We can feel it in there. You see it? You can see it. We're going to have that right against the foot. And we're gonna go ahead and sew as close as we can to that without sewing on roping. You could feel it right in there. I'm trying to prop that up. Okay. And we're just gonna do this all the way around the four, the three sides, because the bottom one has the zip, and we already put it. That one's already has a, a color, which is the zip. So we need to have I'm left handed, so I put my pins in backwards. Pray for me. All right. So I'm just using the rope as my guide. Again, you cannot see it. It's in there, though, but you could feel it. You just got to do the best you can. That's why it's important that when you're doing your measurements, you do your best to measure as straight as you can. Okay? And you pin very well, too. So we're just going to. Continue around. Keep on going. Let's take that pin off. Now see this one? I barely was able to get that edge right here. So I gotta really be careful to make sure I get all that I can get coming around this edge if I wanna crisp edge. So I'm going to go to the edge there. I'm going to leave that needle down and I'm going to lift my presser foot and rotate, baby. We're going to rotate it. Okay. Okay, we're going to push in there and move that up out of the way like we did when we were doing the initial time we were making it. Okay. Make sure you do that. We're gonna put our presser foot back down and continue on as close as we can get without getting on it. So. Okay, let's push that that way. Make sure you move the rest of your fabric too, otherwise it'll make it more difficult for you. So move the bulk of your fabric as you go. I've got some pins in there that's helping me with my guide of where to sew. So, so I hope you guys are having a good day. Again, like I said, um, here in California, it's so hot. I know there's so much crazy weather going on in other places. I'm just grateful that we're not flooded or dealing with a fire right now in my area. I don't know what's going on in the rest of the world, but I'm grateful for that. Okay. I'm doing well. Do 
not touch this. If this comes up and down and hits your fingers, Miss Left Handed Folks, um, you in trouble. I scraped all the skin off my finger once doing that. I learned my lesson. Do not put your hands right there if you want to keep your skin on your finger. Okay. Word from the wise. All right. Here we are about to go around another corner. Again, we got to get real close to it because I trimmed a lot of it off, child. So we're going to get right up to that. Drop that next stitch. And we're going to drop our needle and pivot around. I think I'll do. Yep, there we go. Pivot the fabric all the way around. Here comes honey. You hear the motorcycle, y'all? In case y'all didn't know, my honey is a biker. He was a rider before I met him. That's, that's why I liked him. I like, I like motorcyclists. Um, he was a biker and he's quite good at it. He didn't have a bike for a while. So he's back riding. So I'm happy that he is very happy for him he he works hard he should be able to have some toys you know and it helps on gas too just so y'all know Okay, so I've done all four section sides, okay? All four sides are done. So now what I'm gonna do is just go around all the edges with a zigzag stitch so that it doesn't fray. Just because of this fabric type, it will fray. So up here, I'm gonna go ahead and hit my zigzag, zigzag. But let's change our foot, shall we? Let's raise our pressure foot and change it back to our regular foot because our regular foot has a nice size opening here for that. All right, so I'm gonna take the zipper foot off because we're done with that. And we're going to snap on our regular foot. And with this brunette, changing the feet are pretty simple. They snap kind of on and off, so that's, that's nice. All right. From there to there is good. All right, let's get it on. All right. Now you could do this with a serger if you wanted to, if you had a serger, you could do this with a serger, but I do have a serger. But I know a lot of people don't. And so I was trying to just show you how to do it on just um, a sewing machine. How you can just complete the whole thing on the sewing machine. But you could use a serger to do your ends on this. I'm thinking about getting a new serger. Even though the one I have works pretty good. It's just hard to thread. And I'm over it. It's an older serger. And it's very hard to thread. And I just kind of had it. So I might end up investing in it. Let's leave this stitch in. Raise the presser foot. And this is our last edge here. Okay. Press the foot down. And let's get to going. So again, we're doing this, making sure it overlaps the edge. Okay. We're overlapping that edge. All right. We are done, friends. We are done. And so when you do the edge, then you can have it look like that. Okay, so that you don't get any whole bunch of frill. I mean, you might get a little bit, but you can just cut that off. But it won't be like it would be if you didn't do that. Okay, so just one last time. I don't know what to do with my little... All right, so that's that one. 
Here it is. Let's just cut off the leftover remnants. Now, this is not perfect. The other one I did was a lot better than this. Let me just say, because I took more time. This is a, the last one. I'm just trying to get it done. So, it's not as perfect, but it's still good. We're about to find out in a minute when we flip it inside out, aren't we? Y'all, my toe is on freaking fire. Man, you wouldn't think something so minute as a towel. Well, it's not minute. Some people don't even have toes. Let me not say that, but you know what I mean. Let's turn it inside out. Let's get a look at it. Let's see how we really did. Let us pull out those corners. Okay. Pull out those corners, friends. Now you could, if you wanted to, give it a press. I'm not going to do that. I'm not. I'm just going to kind of stretch it to where I need it to behave at. But you could, if you wanted to. Okay. And again, the only part I'm not satisfied with looking at it is the part where I should have tucked in this edge here. But for the majority of everything else, I'm pretty happy with it. Now I'm gonna show you guys why we did our, our zip the way we did our zip. As you can see, it naturally wants to fold like that from the way we did it. Our zip is under there, okay? But you see how it naturally, this fabric naturally wants to just crease right there. And that's great. That's the reason why we did it so close to um, that part there. Now I could iron that down. Could do that. This part is a little bit wobbly, but for the for most of it, you know, satisfied. Let's go find a pillow to put it in, shall we? I'm just gonna finger press this, um, this crease in so I don't have to iron it. I'm just squeezing it, pinching it, and giving it a crease so that it knows where to fold over. All right, so that's our pillowcase there. And it measured out to be, oh boy, I'm gonna move my tray. Twenty-three inches. When we're all said and done. So twenty-three by twenty-three. All right. So let's go put it on the pillow. All right. So here's our pillow case, and I'm gonna use this back gray one here and take this out of here and use it. Um, yeah, you guys, when you can save money, I know some people say, I don't sew, I don't this, I don't that, sis. But you will when you just start saving money and you can put that money toward a trip or a cruise or a new handbag or something like that. I mean, you purpose for sack of reuse. Ain't no point of uh, spending it when you can learn how to do it yourself. Then you've, de you've developed a skill that you can have for the rest of your life. Okay? And then you can even make money with that skill. So... Don't be so quick to say what you ain't gonna do. Got a couple of threads here. I'm just gonna pull those. All right. Make sure I got my corners here. All right. Those good and ready. Zip her up. And I just went with a plastic zip. I didn't go with a metal one. The other one I did do like a a metal type zip on mm -hmm. um, but I found that the pillow is more pliable with just the zip like this okay so 
This is not a downing pillow, so it's not gonna stand up. It's not gonna do the chop thing and all that. This is just a standard pillow, okay? Now, this is a downing pillow that I made on this one. So if I wanted to stand this one up and do the chop, it would work, okay? That's a downing pillow. This one is just one of those stuffed little like cottony stuffing pillows, right? But, so I made three of them. I have this one, I have one there. Actually, they're all right next to each other. And this is the one we just made. All right. All right, you guys, so that was a tutorial. I know it was lengthy, I know it was long. Don't leave comments, I already know. Normally I don't do videos this long, but I really wanted to go into detail so you guys can see exactly what's entailed in this little project. Um, the first time you do it, it's gonna take a while. The second time you do it, it just gets better and better. The more you kind of hone in on the skill, the easier it becomes. I can get one done in 20 minutes or less. So um, don't give up, okay? But again, it's a skill that is gonna definitely be, be beneficial to you in the future, um, as long as you're gonna have a home and places where you need pillows. All right, so give it a try. Anyhow, I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you haven't yet, check out my fall decor haul where I did this beautiful table. It's, I think it's like maybe two or three videos back. I also did my tablescape. Um, I haven't done nothing over there. Don't even look at that. But check out some of my videos. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. I would love to have you as part of the Wrapped and Scraps family. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Remember to stay loving you, stay loving God, stay loving life. Stay wrapped in scraps. Repurpose, recycle, reuse all parts of your life. Like I did with those panels to make those little pillows. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye, guys.